What's up ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, I'm Never a Dull Moment, and if you're in the market for a new computer monitor or TV, you might have seen a couple articles and videos popping around on the internet talking about how CRTs might be a better display technology than anything modern that's available. Now, CRTs have been around essentially since TV was popularized around the 60s, and they continue to be the biggest technology up until around 2008 when LCD started to outsell them. Around that time, Sony also closed down their CRT factories and stopped producing the Trinitron line, which are still widely regarded to be some of the best CRT displays ever made. So if LCD started to sell better and people kind of shifted their preferences away from CRTs, why would people be saying that that technology is better than modern day LCDs or even OLED technologies? Well, there's a lot of really passionate people on both sides of this argument, and by extension, there's a lot of misinformation out there. So in this video, I wanted to take a measured look at just why some people like CRTs and answer the question if they're really worth buying over an LCD or an OLED in the modern day and age. CRT stands for cathode ray tube. There's a cathode ray that sits at the back of the TV, and then in front of that, there is a huge bubble or tube which surrounds it. On the back side of the front of the display, there are phosphor dots, and the cathode ray shoots electrons at those phosphor dots, and that produces an image using a scan. What's really cool about CRT is that process allows for very precise control over exactly what's going on with the pixels. That means that you get very low input lag, there's very clear motion handling, and they also can produce very high contrast. Input lag is measured in milliseconds, and CRTs can produce input lag as low as around 4 milliseconds, which is very, very fast and very low by today's standards still. Motion handling is a little bit more difficult because it is something that's visual. There are things that you can notice and say it looks bad or it looks good, but there's not necessarily a number. CRTs still produce really good motion, but there's not really hard data to back it up as much. In terms of contrast, CRTs are widely alleged to be able to produce contrast ratios of 15,000 to 1 or higher. The big selling point for OLEDs nowadays is that it can produce infinite contrast. You might be asking, just what exactly does infinite contrast mean? I mean, what do these numbers actually stand for? Well, contrast refers to just how black you can get the dark areas of a screen. Really, really deep blacks will result in higher contrast and therefore higher numbers. Uh, and OLEDs can produce extremely high contrast because they can actually completely turn off pixels, which allows for that infinite contrast number. The main problem that people have with LCD panels is that depending on what kind of panel you're using, they can struggle to produce very good contrast. For gamers, usually TN and IPS panels are the preferred option, with TN being preferred for more fast paced and competitive games. Both of these panels typically top out at around a thousand to one contrast ratio, which is not very high. It does result in more grayish blacks and a kind of more flat image that's not as appealing. VA panels, on the other hand, can produce deeper blacks, but they're generally regarded to have worse motion handling with more smearing and imperfections when there's fast paced content. So where do CRTs fall in this lineup? As it turns out, the answer is a little bit complicated. While a 15,000 to 1 contrast ratio is very good, even by today's standards, there is a caveat. Given the nature of how CRTs work, they're very susceptible to having light bleed into the screen and lower the contrast quite significantly. There are a number of different tests on this online, but when you put a CRT in a bright room, you can find contrast ratio as low as 20 or 50 to 1, which is really pretty lackluster. I've seen some more optimistic numbers saying that it might be closer to around 700 to 1, which could depend on how the tests are done or the panel that's being used. But suffice it to say that they're not that impressive by today's standards. Now, to be fair, contrast is not the only thing that matters with the display. And in fact, there are quite a lot of important measurements to look at, depending on what your specific needs are. Another important number to look at is brightness. But generally, I would consider a good level of peak brightness to be around 500 nits. Now 500 nits is not that hard to find nowadays. If you get a mid-range TV or a mid-range to higher end computer monitor, you're going to be able to find 500 nits or more. And just for reference, some of the brighter TVs on the market can produce over a thousand nits with some newer models even being able to produce around 2000 nits of brightness. 
Now that's fairly ridiculous and most people don't really need that, but I just wanna give you a range and show you what's good and what isn't. So how do CRT stack up in this lineup? Well, I actually found a test that measured the Sony PVM20L5, which is considered to be the holy grail of CRT computer monitors. And it only eked out a peak brightness of around 200 nits. That's similar to what you might find on a low end LCD panel. And if you've had a cheaper computer monitor or a cheaper TV, you might be familiar with the feeling of trying to watch something and just not being able to see past the glare or not really being able to tell what's going on in a brighter environment. I also want to point out that while CRTs do have some very good advantages, there are just some quality of life things that you might want to consider if you're looking at picking one up. Number one, CRTs have a very large footprint. Because of the big boxy design, if you want to throw one on a desk or even on an entertainment center, they really do take up quite a lot more space than more modern technologies. Now that may not be the biggest deal to you, but it is something to consider, and you might have to end up rearranging the way that your living room or desk is set up in order to compensate this technology. In addition to that, CRTs have some disadvantages just by nature of being an older technology. Most CRTs can top out at a max resolution of around 1080i. Now, I stands for interlaced, which means that every other frame is basically not a complete image. I'm not going to get into a lot of the specifics of this, but it's widely regarded that interlaced never really looks quite as good as even a lower resolution. The max usable resolution that you'll probably find on most CRTs is 720p. In addition to that fact, a lot of CRT panels are also in a 4x3 aspect ratio. That means that they're more boxy, and if you're watching a regular TV show on them, you're going to see black bars on the top and bottom. If you're watching a movie, you're going to see even bigger black bars on the top and bottom. I also think that it's fair to bring up that while CRTs do have very low input lag, you can achieve similar results with LCD technology. As I mentioned earlier, TN panels are typically preferred by fast-paced or competitive gamers, and that's because they have lower input lag than most other technologies out right now. You can see input lag as low as about 5 milliseconds, even with things like variable refresh rate enabled. Now, granted, CRTs might still produce smoother motion than even some of the best LCD panels, but I think it's just kind of hard to justify buying one when there are other options available. Finding a good CRT monitor or TV has become difficult because of the resurgence in popularity. If you want that Sony monitor I was talking about earlier, you're going to have to pay probably upwards of $500 and find one in good condition. With all this being said, I don't want to say that you're stupid for buying a CRT or that they're not good for certain things. One area where I think CRTs are still the undisputed champs is for retro gamers. If you're playing some older systems like GameCube or PlayStation 2 or even a Wii, they might be a really good option. You can find some CRT monitors or TVs for very cheap on Craigslist. And if you're willing to chuck it in your car and drive a few miles, it's not that bad of an investment. I mean, you could pay like 50 bucks for a 50 inch screen and that's an awesome deal any way you slice it pretty much. In addition to that, some people just like the nostalgic feel of having something similar to the original TV they played a system on. Because of the smooth motion handling and the native 4x3 aspect ratio, along with resolution that the console was designed to display on, there's really not much of a trade-off with all of this. Realistically, and th unless there's some kind of major breakthrough with the technology, we're probably never going to see CRT displays again. And it's possible that we might never find something that's quite as smooth and quite as low input lag as CRTs were. So if you're interested in checking one out and you can find one for a good price, I say you might as well do it. My main goal is just to have your expectations be met if you do actually pick one up and understand that while there are people that really love the technology and it is really good at certain things, I just don't think it's fair to say that a CRT display from 20 years ago is better than a 4K OLED that you can buy now. I hope this video has been informative and interesting for you. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below and I will see you guys soon.